What's going on guys? Welcome back to the PowerPoint Club and thanks for uh, stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this super cool retro design. Customize the text and export as an image for use in social media, a desktop background or export as a video for an opening sequence in a movie. Let's get into it. So as you can probably see, I've moved my color references to the side of the slide so I can quickly eye drop them into shapes. Insert a rectangle shape and remove the outline. A pro tip, so we don't have to remove the outline on every shape we create, is to select one you're happy with, right click and hit default shape. From then on, any shape you create will retain these properties. I'm using a pink and purple color palette for this design, so I want a dark purple background. In the format shape tab, select the color menu and hit the eyedropper icon. Head over to the purple reference and select it. Next, we need to add some film grain. Remember, we're thinking 80s kind of videotape vibe. Sadly, PowerPoint will only allow us to add artistic effects and special effects on photos, not shapes. Fear not, we're gonna cut the shape onto our clipboard, hit Control X on your keyboard, or right click and choose Cut. Right click again and choose Paste as a picture. Hit Picture Format and go over to our Image Effects and select Artistic Effects. We need some noise, so let's hit the Film Grain and let's change that grain size to say 15. Once you're happy, let's cut this image to our clipboard. Again, Control X on your keyboard or right click. In the Picture Format Background tab, check Picture or Text Fill. We don't want any of this nonsense. Select Clipboard and we'll paste in our new background. Next, onto some cool retro text. Hit Control D on your keyboards to duplicate the slide and go ahead and insert a text box. Let's type out our desired wording. Let's change the color to white to make it a bit more visible. Let's go ahead and change our font. I'm using one, this Road Rage font. Quick pro tip to increase or decrease font size, hit Control and square bracket on your keyboard. Control click to duplicate this layer. Let's go ahead and change this font. I'm using a font called Platea. Now, I find it easier to work with shapes rather than text boxes. So I'm gonna convert these to shapes. It's a bit like outlining your fonts if you were using something like Adobe Illustrator. But make sure you're happy with your wording as this technique makes your text non-editable. Now you absolutely don't need to do this. You can leave them as text boxes. I just find it quicker and easier for editing. Draw a rectangle over your text box and send that to the back. With your rectangle selected, hit shift on your keyboard and click the text. Now head over to merge shapes and hit intersect. Now we have an easily scalable shape. Do the same again for the bottom layer. And now it's time to make these pop. Grab one of your text shapes, head over to fill and let's choose gradient fill. Let's make sure the direction is set to down, select the color stops and eye drop the colors we laid out to the side of our slide to create this kind of effect. Pretty cool. Now let's add a subtle glow for that true 80s vibe. Hit effects and choose glow and change the color, size and transparency to your preference. Do the same for your second text shape, but this time we're going to try and recreate a chrome effect. 
for our chrome effect, we need six colors. So let's hit add stops and add four more to create six. Roughly position them. And hit the far left stop and let's choose our eyedropper tool. One by one, go along each stop using the eyedropper tool to add a new color. We should end up with something a bit like this, but I want a harsh transition from the white to the dark purple. So let's move our sliders around to achieve something like this. Now let's add some finishing touches. Hit Ctrl D on your keyboard to duplicate this layer. Go up to Fill and select No Fill. Move down to the Line Options and let's choose Gradient. Let's fatten the width of this lineup to get something a bit like this. Using the eyedropper tool in our gradient stops, try and match the layer above, something like this, doesn't have to be perfect. Position over the top and let's take a quick look and see what we've got so far. So we're getting there. You can of course apply an outline or a stroke effect to the top layer as one object but I want a specific shadow effect, so that's why I've created two versions. So let's jump over to Effects and hit 3D Format. Select the top bevel and choose one to your liking. We get this kind of chiseled effect here, but I want to soften it up a little. So on the Material option, select Translucent Powder, fancy name, and on Lighting, let's choose Soft. Now this gives us this kind of soft outline. Let's beef this up slightly by going back to the outline fill and brightening up some of the gradient stops. Now let's head up to effects and choose shadow and let's choose this preset here. Mess around with the sliders to get your desired effect. Next. Choose our Chrome Fill and let's give this a nice glow. So head up to Effects and choose the Glow option. I'm going to go for a black to really make it pop. Group the outline and the fill together to make one object. Scale, move and position until you're happy with your layout. First up, we need to create a Tron style grid for our foreground. Grab a line tool from the shape menu, then draw a vertical line at the far left of your slide. Change the colour and thickness to something like this. Hit Ctrl D to make 11 copies and drag the last copy to the far right of the slide. Select all of the lines, hit Shape Format and align these to the top and hit Distribute horizontally to give them an even spacing. Select all the lines and group them together. Control G or right click and group. Then hit Control D to make a copy. Rotate the copy round and move in scale to fit the slide. 
and hit Ctrl G to group these together. A quick tip, an odd number of lines works best as this will always give us a center line as a reference point on the slide. Go over to Effects and hit 3D Rotation. Choose one of the perspective presets that kind of gets us halfway to where we want to be. Play around with the Y axis and the perspective buttons to get something kind of like this. Next, cut this to your clipboard and paste back in as a picture. Now, PowerPoint resizes the image to fit the slide, whereas we want our original size. So, we hit the Size and Properties button and click the Reset button. Drag your grid over to the center of the slide, lining up the center line with the center of the screen. Now we need to trim the excess. Draw a rectangle from our shape tools to cover the area that we want to keep. Select the grid first and then shift click on your keyboard to pick the rectangle second. Head up to shape format and hit the merge shapes drop down and select intersect. Next, grab the line tool from our shapes menu and draw a horizon line, just like so. Change the color and width to whatever you want. I'm gonna put a little glow effect on mine. Something like this. Next, Let's draw some mountains in the distance. Grab the freeform tool from our shape menu. Position this slightly off slide. Click a move to draw in some super basic mountain shapes. With more time, we could draw a cityscape or something similar, but let's keep it simple for this video. Once you're happy, click and loop the line back to the start to make a solid object. Send those mountains to the back and change the fill color to black. To trim these messy edges, draw a rectangle over the area we want to get rid of. Select the mountain first and then shift click on your keyboard to pick up our rectangle. Choose the merge shape menu again and hit subtract. Add a transparency to the mountains to give the illusion of them being away in the distance. Now let's bring the scene to life by adding some neon gradient effects. Insert a rectangle and let's add a gradient fill. Change the transparency of the bottom stop to 100% so the rectangle fades out to nothing. I'm going to position this below my horizon line but play around with your gradient stops, positions and transparency to get an effect that works for you. Let's now add a subtle highlight in the sky. Grab the circle tool from the shape menu, draw an ellipse like so, and fill it with a nice bright color. Group these elements together.
copy your text from slide one and paste into our scene. Adjust the position and size until you're happy. Grab the grouped scene elements and cut to your clipboard, Control X or right click cut and paste back in as a picture as you want to add some more effects. Tidy up any messy edges by scaling and using the crop tool. Add some more film grain from the artistic effects panel. Again, let's choose 15. Now cut and paste in your text as a picture. Let's head up to the artistic effects panel, but this time let's choose glow diffused. Change the intensity and the transparency to your taste. As a finishing touch to our design, let's add some black gradients to the top and bottom to act as a vignette to draw the eye into the center of the screen. Use the same technique as our other gradient fades, making the bottom stop 100% transparent. Duplicate and flip and adjust the sliders to your preference. Now let's take a look at what we've got. So that's it, our retro wave Tron 80s futuristic scene done. No Photoshop, no Illustrator, just PowerPoint. Now I'm running out of time. Outrun, get it? No, okay. But have a play with some animation settings to bring that text to life. There are loads of things you can do with this effect, so go for it. If this isn't your vibe, don't worry. You can definitely use some of the techniques and tips I shared to draw up some other cool projects. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like and comment and more videos are on the way.